Mm. Well, there it is. Richard Lip. I just let it sing for a minute there. <clears throat> because these makers, the, the Hall of Fame makers, as I often refer to them, had a beautifully shaped soundboard. Soundboard made of spruce from the Black Forest of Germany, a timber that I would have mentioned often enough in our little previews. It's the same timber that uh, Stradivarius, for example, used to make his violin belly and back. And that's why those instruments and all the good handmade European violins sound gorgeous. And we've got great violin makers in Australia. And one person's making beautiful violins, world class, with Tasmanian timbers mainly. So you never know what's going to happen in the world of pianos and musical instruments generally. Uh, uh, but this piano is right on concert pitch, re-strung, re-pinned, uh, beautiful new felts all throughout. It's been an absolute pleasure to work on it. It's not the extended end lip which has the beautiful bow shape here. They came a little bit before this instrument. Uh, this is the squarer, planar instrument. If you can call the most beautiful bird's eye walnut in the world plain, but it's a gorgeous piano to play. Uh, and the tone throughout a lip, they're known as having one of the greatest bass tones in the piano world. Uh, and so, for some of them that have suffered some way or need rebuilding, that's just about all they've got left, just the gorgeous bass uh, tone. Uh, but in one that's performing well or recently restored, uh, that myth goes out the window because then the whole piano will sing right from one end to the other. Most beautiful piano um, imaginable. Beckstone, good three crown varnish, uh, some un other wonderful makers, of course, um, can rival it. But I often think of Richard Lip as the prince of pianos. Silly term, I know, but it just struck me when I was a kid. Here it is, the prince of pianos. Uh, but really, we're coming down to personal taste uh, within one instrument or another. And the Steinway uprights, of course, in this league, even to, d to this very day, they make a gorgeous instrument with the spruce soundboard. But it's artistry, uh, all these instruments, even the more humble makers, they are works of art, uh, made in large numbers, but you can mass produce a quality thing which becomes a work of art. And these great people showed that. So I'm very happy to have finished this Richard Lip. It's the Two Crown, it's their flagship, and uh, all beautiful inside. And we've stripped and refinished the cabinet, my son and I, and buffed it up to a lovely finish, and it deserves every bit of that attention. I'll just put the front panel back on so you can see it all together. Still got the original brass work, which is always lovely to see. People often say, why do piano tuners bash into the piano? Well, we only use our inbuilt, inbuilt mallet, which is a perfect thing for it. But there's such a tight, beautiful fit to resist any vibration or rattle in the instrument. So if you see your piano tuner giving a good bang, don't worry. That's a perfect fit we're dealing with. And this instrument, like all the pianos that leave this workshop, uh, has a beautiful set of the new German casters, which, even though this piano weighs about a third of a ton, I've got to just push that around like that. Uh, and the casters, of course, will run over not only carpet, but uh, over polished floorboards without leaving a trace of a mark. Um, over marble, we've fitted them on to, to pianos that go over highly polished marble floors. And of course, slate and vinyl and cork. So it doesn't matter what your floor surface is, these beautiful sympathetic uh, nylon rubber mixture with the twin wheels uh, will absorb any little imperfections in the floor uh, without leaving any marks when you move it. And uh, if we'd had them 50 years ago, we would have been putting them on pianos now. But this instrument, of course, comes with that. And not one of our nice little stools that we make. And that's a duet stool. 
and of course always a locking key which is left inside the instrument, a little shield, and a nice little keyboard cover. It's nice for children particularly to have a keyboard cover, it makes a little ritual of coming to the piano and then finishing their work. Sort of reminds them to wash their hands, a little bit like mine. They could do with a good old scrub down. But there it is, Richard Lip. Uh, that's for a beginner to professional musician. And a lot of families will buy a piano like that for their children because they want to do it once and have an instrument that they grow up with. Well, that's fine. Uh, but uh, these instruments, uh, uh, you know, fetch, fetch a pretty hefty price at the end of all that work and the glorious tone. You know, 20,000 in new pianos wouldn't buy an instrument with that tone and voice. That's not to my credit. It's an enduring credit goes always to the Richard Lip family or the Beckstein family. They were the great people.